there are a very special and unique group of gemstones that show phenomena. So some examples of these are adolorescence and moonstone, color change and alexandrite. Maybe one of the most common is play of color and opal. And today I'm gonna to talk about one of my favorites and that's asterism. Asterism is most commonly seen as a variety of corundum and we call these stones star sapphire or star ruby. Similar to another phenomenal gemstone, which is cat's eye crystal barrel, star gems are actually created by a very unique collection of inclusions. Obviously, most inclusions create a very negative effect on a gemstone. It affects their appearance and therefore their value. But in this case, the collection of inclusions is very rare and they create a star effect on the top of the gem. The star effect is created when inclusions which are very, very long and thin and needle-like, and we call them rutile inclusions, form as a group together. When these rutile inclusions form in only one direction, it can also be very positive, and we often call this rutile silk. So for example, you might see a sapphire described as having a silky appearance. And this is essentially describing the effect similar to if you think of a spool of very silky, shiny thread. When you have that spool of thread and you're kind of moving it under a point of light, you kind of see the light roll across those threads and it creates a very smooth and kind of meditative effect with the light. It gives a very silky and soft texture and this is exactly what we're trying to describe when we say a silky gemstone is that the light is kind of rolling across it in a very beautiful way. Corundum, which is the species again of both sapphire and ruby, actually grows naturally as a six-sided crystal in the earth. And so sometimes, for example, when you see rough ruby, it often looks like a tabular kind of hexagon shape. Because of the six-sided shape, it is possible to have those rutile silk inclusions going in each direction of the side of the crystal. And that's why it's possible that when you look at it under a source of light, exactly like that spool of thread, instead of just seeing that one line of the light, you're going to get the appearance of a lively six-rayed star. In very rare cases, you sometimes even have a double set of these inclusions and you might even see a 12 rayed star. In order to see star gemstones properly, they definitely have to be cut as round cabochons. Sometimes I've seen a double cabochon, but it's usually that single with the flat bottom. There are also many varieties with different colors of star sapphires. And of course, as mentioned, when you get that hot pink, red or purplish red color, it's going to be classified as a star ruby, which is definitely the most valuable, especially in very high qualities. Other than a blue sapphire, which is probably the second most valuable, you're often gonna find them in grayish tones, grayish blues, very light tones, and sometimes also brownish colors. And also very popular is the black star sapphire, which again can be a grayish black, a brownish black, or a true black. Due to the fact that these are such rare and interesting collector's gems, their value can vary widely, especially depending on who's buying them and who's selling them, what their interest is, and there's quite a few different value factors to consider when you're judging a star gemstone. In general, remember that you're still looking for those high quality factors like you would with any gemstone. So if the sapphire has beautiful saturated vivid color with even body color, as a star sapphire, it's going to be all the more valuable. Of course, regardless of the body color, you want it to be attractive and even and semi-transparent if possible. You want that really nice, gemmy kind of luscious look, especially when it's cut as a cabochon. And you want it to be free of inclusions if possible. So no kind of brown or yellowish marks on the stone. And again, to have kind of a nice transparency to it. You don't want too much whitish or other kind of cloudy inclusions in the stone. Now, when it comes to the star, there are quite a few different things you're gonna want to look for. And the, and the first thing you're gonna want to remember is that the easiest way to see the star, regardless of the quality, and lower quality stars are more difficult to see, you want a very strong pinpoint light, such as a meg light, as I have here. And you essentially want to roll that light over the stone, tilt it back and forth as you're looking at it. And you want the star to move side to side very smoothly with the light as you point it at the stone. And you want it to obviously be as well-defined and sharp as possible, have a nice high contrast to the rest of the color of the sapphire or other gem. 
You want the rays of the star to be evenly spaced as possible, and it's really lovely when the rays extend all the way out to the edge or the girdle of the gemstone. A star sapphire that is a little bit lower quality is going to have a star that's less defined, maybe a little bit cloudy looking, maybe just having areas of cloudiness, and definitely what we would call some dead spots. So again, when you're rolling that light source over the stone, the star doesn't move kind of all the way directly from one side to the other. It might have a little bit of a disappearing act. And just remember, if you are under very diffused light, so for example, under sunlight, if you're outdoors, it is gonna make a star gemstone much more difficult to see regardless of the quality. It is not a common for star gemstones to be heated, especially with sapphires and rubies. And the heat treatment can do a couple of things. It can intensify the effect of the star, and it can also improve the body color of the stone. However, you definitely wanna keep in mind that there are a lot of synthetic, which is the same as lab or factory made sapphires and rubies, and even imitation stones on the market. And in this case, imitation could be glass or plastic. At one point, they were actually extremely popular for men's jewelry in particular. So there was a lot of synthetic stones being made for these types of pieces. Now to help you spot a synthetic, you definitely wanna look for stones that in general are just a little too perfect looking. So again, if you found a star ruby or sapphire that has just a very vibrant, kind of saturated and vivid red or blue or black color with a very perfect star, very clean, very sharp, and the bottom of the cabochon, for example, you could even look upside down on the ring or another piece of jewelry to try and see the back, has kind of a perfectly flat, almost plasticky looking appearance. These are all things that are just a little bit too perfect to be natural and it makes them very likely to be synthetic. Remember that in real life, these natural stones are actually quite rare and it's going to be very difficult to find one with that beautiful red, blue, or true black body color with zero inclusions and a perfect sharp star. And if you do, the price point is going to be very, very high. So if you, again, you see a gemstone like this and it has literally no inclusions, no marks, just absolutely perfect in every way, you have to think twice and think that maybe it's a little bit too good to be true. It's far more likely to find a natural star sapphire, again, with a little bit of a cabochon shape that is not perfect. It could be a little bit out of the round. The dome could be not quite right. The base likely has some inclusions on it or things that help to show you that it's natural. It's likely not gonna be perfectly flat could have little spots of yellow or brownish tint or little cloudy areas that make it a little bit imperfect. And to find the rays of the star being perfectly spaced and all the way to the edge and moving perfectly, again, these are things that are highly unlikely to be found all in one gemstone. You can also find other gemstones, including garnet and spinel and diopside in star varieties that are even less common than sapphires. Star sapphires have been documented since the 1500s, and of course when people found them they thought they were so alluring and had magical qualities. People thought maybe they brought you mental clarity or allowed you to have visions of the future. They've been called stones of destiny, which I think is quite sweet. And overall, I've always been attracted to these gemstones. I think their phenomena is so special and they can bring such an interest to different pieces of jewelry and just to your collection in general. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have other questions about star sapphire, ruby, or other gemstones, please feel free to put them in the comments below and visit us on our main page at winstongemsandjewelry.com.